My name's Kathy. If you don't know me, I am an international undergraduate freshman at Korea University in Seoul, South Korea. And today I am doing a highly requested video, which is the admissions process. I'm going to walk you through the application that I went through. Um, I applied to three schools. I applied to Korea University, Yonsei University, and Iwa Women's University. I got accepted to all of them. A lot of their application processes are the same. Like some of the documents you have to send are a little different, but in general, what you go through is the same. So this is specifically Korea University's applications and admissions process, but it is very similar to what I went through for uh, Yonsei University and Iwa Women's University. Now, before I begin, disclaimer, I am not an admissions counselor. So there are some questions that I cannot answer, specifically the what are my chances of getting in question, because everybody's different and the criteria they judge people on I don't exactly know what it is, so I can give you some information about what I wrote on my personal statements and how I got accepted, but as far as me telling you what your chances are, there's nothing I can really do about that. So if you have any sort of admissions inquiries, please talk to the Office of Admissions. I will put their email somewhere around here. So without further ado, let's get started. Before you begin applying, you must ask yourself this one question, and that question is, am I Korean? If you answered yes to this question, then you are not eligible for the international student application. If you have any sort of Korean citizenship or Korean blood inside of you, you are considered a Jaewaegukmin, or an overseas Korean. Um, I don't know anything about that application process, and I think that if you renounced your Korean citizenship at some point, you can apply as an international student, but you have to prove to them with documents that you renounced your citizenship. I don't know completely. If you have a question about that, go talk to the admissions office. When you apply, there is an application window, and this application window is very, very short. They literally give you, I think Korea gave me like a month or no more than a month and a half to fill out the application and send them all of my documents. You will find that Korean universities are very, very quick. Basically, in your application window, um, they have that specific time frame and you have to mail them your documents. And you have to get a lot of documents notarized. You ha I'll talk about all of the documents later. Um, you have to get some documents apostled and it has to reach them by a specific date. Now, I'm from the US and my documents were going to the complete opposite side of the world, so I had to make sure that they got there in time, so I sent it through express mail. And this express mail was like 60 bucks per application, and I had three applications, so I was spending 60 bucks to send my documents to them three times. And also later, because Initially, I didn't have my diploma, so I had to send some extra documents later. So you have to spend another 60 bucks to send your documents through express mail, which kind of sucks. But if you know that your documents can get there in time, you could probably choose a different option. But that's totally up to you. At the end of the application period, they will let you know on a specific day. For me, it was November 29th at 2 a.m. I remember it very clearly. Um, Korea University and Iwa Women's University, they both used this November 29th date, but what Yonsei does, Yonsei, after they receive your documents, they send you the acceptance email within four weeks. Um, I had some issues with my SAT score, so I didn't get that email within four weeks, but that's irrelevant. But anyways, basically you find out on a very specific day for Korea University. Now you know that you have like a month and a half at most to do your entire application. What does the application entail? On your application document, there is going to be like your general information. So for example, name, passport number, address, uh, family's information. You have to basically prove to them that you are not Korean. Because if you are Korean, remember you are not considered an international student. You are considered Tewekukmin or overseas Korean. So for your family's information, you have to prove their nationality, um, tell them your occupa their occupation, etc. 
Um, you talk about your educational background. So Korean universities, they want to know every single school that you have ever gone to. So I had to list my elementary, middle, high school, all of that stuff. Your language proficiency score is really important. To get accepted to Korean universities, you can either get accepted with English proficiency or Korean proficiency. If you have a TOEIC score, you can submit your TOEIC score. If you have an English score like TOEIC, TOEFL, IFLs, you can submit that score. Or if you're like me, I am a native English speaker. So what I do is since I went to a high school that was taught completely in English, I don't need to send them any sort of score. My transcript is enough proof to them that my classes were taught entirely in English and I had a completely English educational background. I guess you could denote that on your application, but if you are a native English speaker, as long as you went to a school that taught entirely in English, you are fine getting accepted just like that. So after the general information section, you are going to have your self-introduction. And when I get asked the question of, what are my chances of getting in? Um, I think that your self-introduction section is the most important to appeal yourself. On the Korea University application, there are four questions. Question number one, what is the purpose of your application to Korea University and why did you choose your major? Um, for me, I talked about my interest in Korea, my uh, interest in leadership, stuff like that. That's why I chose the business major. Also, there's a character limit. It's like 2,000 characters or something, and you can write your answers either in English or Korean. Number two, what kind of effort did you make during your high school years to become a suitable candidate for KU? I wrote about like how I studied Korean at home by myself. Or like, I became interested in Korean culture, I started learning how to cook Korean food. Question number three is, please describe your experiences in which you have set your own goals and made efforts to achieve them in areas other than academic studies. Uh, I don't remember what I wrote for that. Oh, I started a club in high school, K-pop club. I might have wrote about that. I don't remember, it was a while ago. But still, as long as you appeal yourself to make it seem like you are a good fit for Korea and Korea is the best place for you, you can contribute to Korean society, then that will raise your chances of getting accepted, I think. Again, I'm not an admissions counselor. Question number four is, what are your future plans after graduating from Korea University? Now, if you're like me, you have absolutely no idea what you want to do with your life. Now, now I have an idea, but when I applied, I still didn't really know. So I just put like, oh, I want to get my MBA from a university in America. But then I wrote like, I don't know where I'm going to go after that. It's just going to be personal to you. After your self-introduction, you have the attendance report. Remember how I said they want to know every school you have ever gone to in your entire life? You have to submit another thing about that. So. Basically, you list every single school that you have ever gone to, elementary, middle, high school. If you've gone to multiple, you have to list those. You have to list the country, and you have to list the contact information, just so they can contact them if they want to. After the attendance report, it's the release of information form. So that's like a consent form to say that Korea University can contact anybody that you put on this application to get more information. Next comes the letter of recommendation. Choose a teacher or somebody that you are close with that knows you pretty well and that can say really good things about you and they have, there is a specific letter of recommendation document that you can print out and send to your teacher or whoever's going to write you the letter of recommendation. And like most letters of rec, I think, I didn't apply to schools in America so I don't know exactly, but for letters of recommendation, um, it has to be in a sealed and signed envelope so they can prove that you didn't alter it in some way. So I got my teacher to write it, he sealed it, he signed it, he gave it to me, and I put it in my envelope to send to KU. I never read it, don't know what he said, but I think he said good things about me, because I got in. After that, you can submit your portfolio, but the portfolio is only for arts or design majors, and I'm a business major, so that didn't apply to me, but if you apply for one of those degrees, then you do have to submit some sort of portfolio, and there is a document explaining that, but I didn't need it. 
After that comes your list of optional documents. So this is basically anything that you want to send them, you can send them. For example, you can send your SAT or ACT score. Um, for Korean universities, your SAT score or whatever college entrance exam that you take is entirely optional. And from personal experience, I do not recommend sending your SAT score. And I'm going to tell you why. So tangent. Um, in April of 2019, I took the SAT at my school. And the first time you take the SAT, you get four free score sendings. So I put Seoul National University, which I didn't apply to. I put Yonsei, Iwa, and KU, and I sent them my scores. What happened though is they got them, but they got them over the summer. And at that time, they didn't have my application and they didn't know who I was. So they took my score, they put it in an unknown file, and then they couldn't get it back. And that's why Yonsei University, that's why they didn't send me an email within four weeks because I put on my application saying that I sent my SAT score, but they never got it. Well, they did, but they really didn't. So they put me on their waiting list because they were going to wait for my SAT score to come in. But I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I tried to like rush send my scores to them and they never got it anyways. And I got in. So I think that sending your SAT or ACT or whatever exam score, it's just going to be way too complicated. And also something important, they do not take AP. I took a push in high school. I also took three other AP classes. Um, these universities do not take any sort of AP credit. So if you know that you're going to go to Korea, like I did, don't bother killing yourself with AP exams and shit like that. Because it's not worth it because they don't recognize it. Next to your SAT scores or whatever, you can send like certificates that you got. For example, I was in some honor societies in high school. So I know for the EWA application, I sent them like my math honor society certificate, like some honor society I didn't care about. Um, you don't have to send them this. Like I said, it's an optional document section. Basically just send them anything that makes you look cool. I don't remember if I sent KU anything. I don't think I did. Lastly in the document section is your statement of reasons. Basically, if your transcript or something looks a little funky, you have to tell them why. So some of these examples is like skipped semesters, missed semesters, failed semesters. Um, for me, I graduated early. On my transcript, I wasn't going to have like a full four years of high school. I had to explain why I graduated early and I had to show them document proof that I was graduating early. Like I didn't have my diploma yet, so my counselor sent a letter that is also another required document that I'm going to explain later saying that I'm graduating early, I've been at this school since whenever, basically that. Okay, after your application documents comes the supplementary documents. Now, like I said, you have to prove to them in every way possible that you are not Korean. What you have to send them is copies of your passport, copies of your parents' passports, um, I had to send them my parents' divorce papers to prove, like, custody and shit because I didn't send them anything from my biological father's side, so I had to explain why by showing them my parents' divorce papers. Um, birth certificate, too, and all of these must be notarized. And what that means is you go in the presence of a notary. For example, if you go to UPS, the UPS store, they have notaries there or like a bank, they have a notary. And basically you sign the document in front of them. They put a stamp on there and then the notary person signs it too. Also, you have to send them some other school documents that have to be notarized as well. And there's something else that you have to get on these. Your school documents that you have to send them, you have to send your transcript, your certificate of attendance. Now. We don't have those in America, a certificate of attendance. So my counselor just wrote me a letter saying, Catherine entered on August 2016 and she's graduating in December 2019. Signed, counselor. That's it, but it had to get notarized. You need your expected date of graduation if you have no diploma. Again, my counselor just wrote a letter saying, Catherine will graduate on December whatever 2019. Signed, counselor. 
that has to get notarized. And then later, after I received my diploma, I notarized it and sent it to them. Now, for these school documents, you have to get something called the Apostle. What the Apostle is, is in your country, you have to go to some sort of office and get the Apostle seal. And the Apostle basically means that another country, like specified on the certificate, this other country can use your documents. I don't, I don't know... It's, it's part of something called the Hague Convention. I don't know everything about it, but it's really annoying having to get it. So your transcript, certificate of attendance, your expected date of graduation, and or your diploma have to get notarized, and then you have to go to this office and get the Apostle Seal. The Apostle Seal, it's just like a certificate that says this document can be used in South Korea, but it applies to a lot of countries in general. Oh, I have to mention, if you do not come from an English-speaking institution or a Korean institution, you have to get all of your documents translated into either English or Korean. I'm from America, I didn't have a problem with that, but if you're from another country, it's probably going to be annoying having to do that. For the Apostle Seal, like I'm from Chicago, the Apostle Office, it's like a 9-4 to four weekday type of thing, so we drove to Chicago, or to downtown Chicago in the middle of the fucking winter, and got my document sealed and sent it to them. And the fee for it is like two bucks per document, so whatever. But some some countries aren't part of the Hague Convention, so you don't need the Apostle. I don't know how that works. Don't ask me. Go check if your country is in the Hague Convention. And then after you have gathered all of your application documents, all of your supplementary documents, you put it in an envelope, you address it to Korea University, and you send it to them. I sent it through express mail, but if you know that your documents can get there sooner, send it through something cheaper. I don't know. It's up to you. You sent your documents. Now you wait. Um, yeah, like I said, Yonsei tells you within four weeks if you got accepted. Now, if you don't get accepted, I don't think they send you an email at all. But for Iwa and KU, on November 29th, for me it was at 2 a.m., it's like 5 p.m. Korean time, but in Chicago it was 2 a.m., there is an, like, an application portal, and at that time, you go to the application website, you put in your information, and it'll tell you if you got accepted or not. So it'll say, like, 합격 or 불합격, and I will put my certificate of acceptance somewhere around here that they later give you. That's it. So after you get accepted, um, at Korea University, the Global Services Center, which is like a super awesome organization, they'll get in contact with you and they will help you prepare for coming to Korea. They will send you some documents to help you get your visa, like you need some business registration thing, I think, in order to get your visa. So you have to go to the Korean embassy in whatever location you're in. Luckily, there is a Korean embassy in Chicago. But if you live in some of the neighboring states, same for the Apostle office, you, ha you can mail in your documents to them, but I just went straight to the Korean embassy myself, which was in the NBC Tower in Chicago. So you get your visa. I got mine, like, honestly, a, a couple weeks before I left to go to Korea. After your acceptance day on November 29th, you have two and a half months to go to Korea. Like I said, it's very, very fast. You only have two and a half months after knowing that you got accepted. So you have to book your plane ticket, you have to try to get your visa, I mean, prepare anything and everything that you need to go to Korea. The application process, it's stressful, it's annoying, and I hated waiting for that amount of time. It was like a deafening silence, but I don't regret it at all, and I'm very happy that I chose Korea University. The last part is about scholarships. I honestly don't know a lot about scholarships. Like some people ask me about the Global Korea Scholarship or KGSP. I think those are different things. Um, United States, people from the US are not eligible to apply for the KGSP. Um, and I think I maybe the Global Korea Scholarship is just for grad students. Maybe not. I don't think so. I don't know. I honestly don't know a lot of information about scholarships, but I know for the Yonsei application and Iwa, I'm pretty sure, you fill out separate documents for the scholarships, but for KU, you should be automatically considered.
because the tuition at KU is so low, it's like $3,500 per semester. Um, they didn't give me any scholarship, they didn't give me any money, and neither did the other two schools. I know along the way at KU and the other schools, if you keep your GPA up, you can get scholarships along the way, like academic related scholarships. But as far as like financial aid scholarships, unless you have like no money at all, I don't think it's that easy to get financial scholarships. Also within your department, there are some scholarships like the business school, for example, they have like the dream scholarship, they have some other financial related scholarships, but those are mostly like if you are dirt poor and have no money to support your education whatsoever, then you can apply for this. But for me, I come from a middle class family, so I really wasn't eligible for any stuff like this. Um, there are also scholarships for if you come from like developing countries too, but again, I'm from the US, none of it applied to me, so I couldn't really apply for scholarships. I want to direct you to the Office of Admissions if you have any future inquiries about scholarships because I'm really not that knowledgeable about it. I know if you go to the KU website, there will be some information. Um, if you, for example, want to apply to the business school or some other department, if you go to the department website, you can also find information about scholarships there too. Last thing I'd like to say is after you get accepted, I'm a business major, so KU told me you can complete your major entirely in English. You will not be taking any classes in Korean. That's a lie. And I'll tell you why it's a lie, because you can complete your major courses entirely in English. Like, I can complete all my business courses in English. However, there are general education courses that you are required to take that are not taught in English. For example, college writing. Or there's a class called Liberty Justice Truth, which is a like a debate presentation class. Yeah, those are not in English and they're fucking hard. At KU, you take a Korean placement test. You also have to take an English proficiency test. But for the Korean placement test, you get either elementary, intermediate, or advanced. I got intermediate, but these classes are so fucking hard. Like... It's, even all of my Korean friends, they say it's way too advanced for the intermediate level. So that's why I recommend to you, you should study Korean before you come here. Like my roommate, she basically come, she came here knowing 안녕하세요 and 감사합니다, which is hello and thank you. And she deferred those two classes to later semesters and instead filled them with like elementary Korean learning classes. There are like Korean learning classes that you can take like along with college writing and which is liberty justice truth i took an intermediate korean class next semester i'm gonna take advanced korean this semester i failed to get it on my schedule but there are like speaking and reading and writing classes to help you improve your korean but when you take college writing and liberty justice truth you are in the foreigners class so the professor understands that you might be shit at speaking Korean, but still, the topics we had to do were really hard, like giving debates about artificial intelligence, or writing a five-page essay about air pollution. That's not very intermediate, you know what I'm saying? 100% prepare your Korean before you come to Korea. Even if it's just a little bit, even if you just get the elementary level, like I had some friends taking the um, elementary level, of these classes and they said it was basically just like learning Korean. Also, there's no way you can take the level lower. Like if you get intermediate level, you have to take intermediate level. Like I really wish I could go down to the elementary level because I think that would be easier for building more skill for me, but I can't do it. So how I survived is I just, uh, I have some really awesome Korean friends that correct all of my assignments. So. Love you guys. I think that's it. I think that's as much information as I could possibly come up with to give you. Oh, oh, I also get a lot of questions about the dorm. All of the dorm information is on the dorm website. So if you watch my dorm video, in the pinned comments I did put more information about like fees for the dorm. 
um, the application schedule for the dorm. Like they do it based on priority, not on like whatever you sign up for. The rates depend on like single, double, triple, stuff like that. And there are different houses that you can live in. I don't really know much about graduate students either. Sorry. So if you have any questions about the dorm, there is a dorm email guy. I'll put it right here. Yeah, any dorm inquiries, you can just look on the dorm website, select undergraduate or select graduate, and they and that website has all the information you could possibly need. So, I think that's it. This video is going to be so fucking long, but I hope it helped you. And I hope that you can get accepted, and we can all be a happy family in Korea. Despite the virus. Yeah. This is my second semester entirely online, Zoom University, but it is what it is. I think that's it. If you have any further questions, you can um, message me on Instagram, you can send me an email, but it, if I can't answer your question, I'm sorry, I'm just going to direct you to the Office of Admissions. Or, like I said, if you're Taewae Gukmin, overseas Korean, go talk to Minji, she's super cool. So, that's it. Thank you. Good luck.